Again, not again. It's only the third time this week. Only? Only? This has been going on for months now. What do you mean by only? At least the vase is still in one piece. Right. This has gone on long enough. What are you doing? I'm doing what I should have done a long time ago. That woman who contacted us from Cambridge, she said she could help us. The Delta Project. Are you sure about this? <laughs> in the cerebral cortex. Fascinating, don't you think? Uh, yes, but... Dr Munro, if I could just have five minutes of your time... Ah, Dr Munro, I'm so glad I've caught you. Now, if I could just speak to you for five minutes... Philip, I have something here I'd like you to read. Oh, thank you, Dr Munro. Thank you. I think you'll find the Bash Street kids are particularly good this week. Started without me, I see. Micrograph. Check if there are any muscular fluctuations during the levitation. Hold still. Do you really think we're getting anywhere? Are you kidding? You've only been here six months. You've made fantastic progress. What did you expect to be doing? Making watermelons hover around the ceiling? Not just the levitation. All the other stuff. I mean, it's hard, you know? Of course it's hard. Anything that's never been done before is hard. Anyway, you won't be on your own for much longer. So who is this new kid, then? His name's Ed Curtis. He's been creating a mass of paranormal activity. He's been doing his parents' heads in. So he's a psychic freak like me? I've told you before, this is not a curse. It's a gift. How long's he staying? As long as it takes, I guess. Right. Let's have another go. Where's the, uh... Let's use this. Now, I know you can do this, Julia. Just concentrate. Focus the force. Let your mind take control. Today. 
Dr. Monroe, if you could spend a little more time on your lectures and a little less on this paranormal palaver of yours, it may just be possible to sustain a modicum of tranquility for those of us who still wish to work. Professor Quigley... Don't spin me any more of that hooey. I'm afraid it just won't wash. Very like the tea stains on this tie. Look, I'm onto something important. The girl I brought here, she's displaying psychic qualities you would not believe. If all you've been able to come up with so far is this flying cup and saucer trickery, then forget it. We are not here to play infantile games. This is no trickery. Oh, just come and see my research. That's all I ask. I've seen quite enough already. Thank you, Dr. Monroe. That will be all. I've been able to trace the source of the psychic energy to a part of the brain that we all thought was dead. Are you still here? Professor Queeley, I don't think you quite understand. No, Dr. Munro, it's you who don't quite understand. You don't understand who's running this department. You don't understand who's financing your research. You don't understand I can shut you down like that. You wouldn't. <laughs> I would, and it wouldn't be for the first time either. That raving maniac, Otto Weevil, his experiments were even crazier than yours. Naturally, I had him thrown out in his ear. And the same thing will happen to you, Dr. Munro, if you persist in this unhealthy fascination for half-baked hocus-pocus. <laughs> So what did the old cross want to see about this time? Running in the corridor? Not handing in your homework on time? Smoking behind the bike sheds? Something like that. Uh, this is just a wild guess, but do I take it the session's over? Sorry. You know what he's like. Oh, Julia. Uh-oh, here it comes. All right, I admit it. It's big favour time. I knew it. I've got to go and earn a living. Could you go to the coat station and meet Ed for me? Monroe, don't do this to me, please. Julia, I knew I could depend on you. He's arriving on the 4.30 coach from London. Just go straight home. I'll meet you back there later. So tell me, what is the current rate for babysitting? Uh, how's about the biggest, most mouth watering pizza in town? And a chocolate milkshake. And key lime pie? Done. Brilliant. I'm out of here. From London? I'm supposed to be meeting Dr. Monroe from the Delta Project. Where is she? Hang about. Why are you asking me? How do you know that I know anything about any Delta Project? I don't. I just... Look, sorry. Julia Stone. What? Come on. You don't expect me to carry your bag. She'll be able to help me. It's my problem. It's not a curse, you know. It's a gift. Did your mum and dad send you here? Do you mind if we change the subject? Sorry. <laughs> what was that? You felt it too. You must be picking up on some weird psychic vibrations or something. When Rose says that sort of thing can happen sometimes, you sort of echo something bad in the air. What are you looking at? Move away from here immediately. What are you going to do with those rabbits? <laughs> what possible business 
is this of yours? I only asked. Oh, I'm only answering. Now, push off. Or oh, what? Julia. Medal at your peril. Charming. <laughs> Take your hands off me, Monroe. What is it with you, woman? Have you got some sort of war vendetta against me, or what? It was just an accident. Is it some devious plan to wreck my academic career? No, I was... Look, look, the proofs of my latest book. Doused in Darjeeling, scattered all over the place. I'll lend you some matches. Perhaps you'd like to go the whole hog and torch them. Look, I'm sorry. I despair of you, Monroe. I really do. I do. I really do. I must have been under some hideous curse the day you bewitched me into taking you on. Professor. Be gone, weird sister. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone. Have a nice evening. This is home. Beautiful, isn't she? You seriously live here? It's a big deal. It's better than the dump I came from. And this is where you expect me to stay? You have a problem with that? You don't like it or something? Like it? It's brilliant! Can I go in? You ain't seen nothing yet. To Ed. The newest member of the Delta Project. To Ed. Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Don't look so nervous. Tomorrow we'll have some fun. But what about the experiments? The tests? Relax. It's just like playing games. <laughs> right. You only start worrying when she gets out the chainsaw and says she needs to slice off the top of your skull. Don't! She's just winding you up, Ed. Take no notice. I would never use a chainsaw. I prefer to use an electric drill. <laughs> <laughs> really, Ed, I can't wait to see some of these stunts of yours. I've heard all about the levitation, the flying furniture, the metal bending. beating of your little heart, the terror in your tiny eyes, but not for much longer, my precious, not for much longer. I'm sorry about last night. Ed is okay. Everyone has nightmares. It's just yours are a bit more flamboyant. And 20 times noisier. My dad said he'd pay for any damages. Oh, it is not your fault. But why does it happen? You see, all that stuff being thrown around, that's just kinetic energy. But it frightens people. They can't appreciate what's really happening. The truth is, it's something so basic, so fundamental. I don't understand. She's saying that it's not only us. Anyone could do what we do. In theory, yes, that's right. It's buried deep in a part of the brain we know little about. So when I say it's a gift, it's because somehow, don't ask me why, only certain people, like you and Julia, are able to tap into this incredible ability. My parents don't see it as a gift. And why should they? All they've seen so far is the mayhem and the shattered crockery. So will you be able to help me stop it then? Ed, I have no intention of trying to stop it. What I'm going to attempt is to channel it, to use the psychic force in a positive way. Okay. You ready, Eddie? I guess so. Very 
Very good. Right. Let's start with some thought transfers. Julia? Mm? Come on. I've got two of you here at last time to try some telepathy. What, now? Now would be nice. Oh, well, make a change from levitating lemons. Right. Let's go for it. I want you, Ed, to think of something, anything at all. And you, Julia, you try to focus your mind and pick up what he's thinking. Just concentrate now. You can do it. I know you can do it. Delta Project, day 123. Subjects Julia Stone and Ed Curtis. Experiment number one, telepathic communication. You can't hide from me. I'll find you wherever you are. <laughs> and when I do... Yeah. Mm. Well, I have to hand it to you, Dr. Monroe. Not content with merely scalding me with hot tea and then running me down on your bicycle, you decide to blow up the whole department. Your ambition knows no bounds. What do you have planned next? Maybe we should be considering the complete evacuation of Southeast England. Professor Queenie, I know you're annoyed. Annoyed? Annoyed? <laughs> annoyed is when I can't find my car keys. Annoyed is when I run out of tea bags. An adequate word hasn't been invented to describe the way I'm feeling at this precise moment. I'd like to apologize. Every light in the place blown, every electrical implement trashed, every computer down. Shall I go on? Not if it upsets you. You single-handedly brought this whole department to a standstill. Not even Otto Weevil managed that. You're a complete liability. A walking disaster area. A jinx. I warned you, Monroe. You've given me no option. But hang on. Well, the work I'm doing is just starting to get results. Yes, yes. Heard it all before. Exactly what Weevil said when I gave him the boot. You can't shut me down. From this moment on, the Delta Project is finished. But my research... Terminated. Extinct. Dead as a dodo. And from this moment, I want you and your teenage fan club out of this building immediately. This isn't fair. Failing that, I'll send in security and have the whole wretched lot of you thrown out onto the pavement. But my equipment, all my stuff. I suggest you get packing. Goodbye. And that's your last word, is it? No. My last word is out. 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 I'm just beginning to laugh at you. I'm sorry. I really am. It's all right for him. He can run back to Mummy and Daddy. What's going to happen to me? I'm not going back to that place. I'll just run away again. What place? It's OK, Julia. I'll sort something out. Trust me. You have no job, no income. What are you going to do? I don't know, OK? I don't know. It's going to be all right. I promise. I won't let you down, not now. Where do you want this? Look, this is ridiculous. We don't all need to stay here. I can finish packing on my own. Why don't you two take off and see a movie or something? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I'll catch you later. Now go. Go. And you'll be all right. 
Bring me back some popcorn to drown my sorrows. Come on. in that little body of yours? Yeah, and I also have a spark of life in this little body of mine. I'd like to keep it that way. Come on. Bark, 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 bark. I am not chicken. Well, then, prove it. Just a quick look. Promise. Promise. There's nothing here. So can we go now? Julia, a bit louder. Something in Glasgow didn't quite hear that. this year. A human being to experiment with. Help! Somebody, anybody, help! Aren't I a lucky weevil? <laughs> I've been so glad to see anyone in all my life. Well, that puts me right up there with Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. Talking of bunny. The rabbits in the lab, some kind of experiment. Ed's still in there. Whoa, oh, oh, steady. Yes, come on. Julia. Oh, trouble, we don't have time. What is it? I don't know. Something bad, something very bad in here. What happened to Ed? Julia, I ran to the door. I thought he'd follow me, but he just stood there. Oh. What's up, that? Oh, Ed. Oh. What happened to you, little twit? Nothing. I'm fine. Oh, yeah, so how'd you escape then? Piece of pudding. Oh, oh right. Back in there, you were shaking in your boots. Who was? You was. Was not. Was so. Excuse me. I'm only the mug who's responsible for your welfare. Any chance of letting me know what's going on around here? We had to come in. We just had to come in. There are all these weird kinds of experiments. I wanted an explanation, not a headache. I must have been knocked out or something. When I woke up, there was nobody about. Well, looks like you were lucky. No bumps, no bruises, no broken bones. The boy must be made of rubber. So. Well, does anything hurt? 
One of my teeth is really aching. Yeah, so I think we can put that down to the jumbo-sized bag of jelly beans and the two choc ices you managed to stuff down your neck at the cinema. I did not. It's not true. Hey, Munro, when he fell, he must have dislocated his sense of humour. Hmm. Uh, your jaw does look a bit swollen. What am I going to tell your parents? Please don't tell my mum and dad. They'll make me come home. They won't understand. I don't understand. Whatever were you doing there? We told you 50 times already. We had to. There's something evil going on in that place. That place is private property and you had no right to be there. You're lucky the owner didn't call the police. I can't believe you're talking like this. There's some maniac doing sadistic experiments on defenceless rabbits and you're giving us a hard time. Okay, thank you. Now, Ed, I'd like to take you along to the hospital tomorrow, get you checked out properly. I'm OK. I'm fine. Honest. Let's see if the experts agree with you. If they say you're OK, then I guess there's no point in worrying your folks. And our friendly neighbourhood Frankenstein? It's been a long day. I vote we turn in now. I'm sure things will all look a lot brighter once we've had a good night's sleep. <laughs> still think this is a waste of time. There's nothing wrong with it. Let's let the doctor decide that, shall we? I scream. You scream. We all scream. I scream. Night. Post traumatic shock syndrome. I've seen it before. But you were almost killed. If it hadn't been for Julia. We almost had ourselves a new flatmate. <sighs> flatmate? Flat? <sighs> Forget it. Come on. Where are we going? The hospital. Ring any bells? Oh, what? I escaped the lorry and now I'm going to die of embarrassment. A near perfect trial run. Just crank up the pain modulator and order up that coffin. According to the doctors, you're disgustingly fit. So if there's nothing wrong with him, let's split. Something has to explain what happened out there in the street. A knock on the head. I don't know. Anything. What's that? Looks like a filling in one of your molars. I don't have any fillings. Oh, yeah? Who believes it? I don't. I've never had a filling in my life. Look. Oh, yeah. You haven't got her. Nurse! Oh, Jake oh, jacket! Pack it in, you two. It's her. She won't believe that I've never had any fillings. I should know. Some of us take care of our teeth. Ed, are you positive about this? Positive, I'm positive. My dentist says my teeth are perfect. He only checked them a few weeks ago. Let me see. Well, there's definitely something attached to this tooth. There you go, young man. A small souvenir. Nurse? Excuse me. I'll be right back. Well, what is it then? And where did it come from? This is just too weird. I need to take a closer look at this. Come on. Hang about! Where are we going? Oh, no. I see it, but I just don't believe it. What? Oh, here, have a look for yourself. What is that? Well, wacky as it sounds, it appears to be some kind of electronic device, a minute radio receiver, I think. You're kidding me. That's insane. Who would want to plant a bug inside a kid's mouth? Some crazed, deranged tooth fairy? I don't know. I told you, didn't I? It's that place. There's something spooky going on there. That's where we'll find the answer to all this. You were right. You were right all along. We need to get inside and discover what's going on. Ed? Mm. Grab your jacket. What? We're going to pay a visit to the mad scientist. No way. You'll be okay. Just remember to keep your mouth shut this time. Mm. 
need to take my look through there. Hang on a minute. I can't go charging in like King Kong in a cage shop. We don't know what we're walking into here. We have to move cautiously. Be alert at all times. Stay on our toes. Follow me. I don't believe this. We walk straight into it like lambs to the slaughter. Monroe, do something. Over the top or what? Help! Somebody help us! Don't just stand there like an idiot. Shout, will you? Somebody's got a sense of humour. A very sick sense of humour. Digital timer, plastic explosives. Our little cuddly bunnykins, my friends, is a bomb. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, run, run. It's no good. We're wasting our time. It's not as if we've got a great deal left to waste. Help! Somebody help! Solid iron bars. There's no way anyone's going to be able to bend these. Anybody help! 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 You remember the other night? When we had the pizzas? So? You bent the spoon. Spoons, forks, iron bars, what's the difference? But there's less than a minute before that thing goes off. Our lives are in your hands. Please, go for it, Eddie. Indeed. We came to unravel a mystery. Thanks to the explosion, any clues we might have found just went up in smoke. There still might be something to help us amongst all this junk. What are we looking for? I don't know. Something, anything. Just keep looking, will you? Perhaps we should just go to the police. Hang on. W. O W. Oscar Wilde? Oprah Winfrey? Oliver Wint Stanley? Who? Oh, he's a boy who used to live down my street. This is nuts. We're shooting in the dark. We need something more specific. You want specific? You've got it. Hmm? You're forgetting. Genius Jim here is not the only one with paranormal powers. O W. Otto. Otto. Whistle, Weevil. Weevil! Otto Weevil! Otto Weevil! That's it! Otto Weevil! How did you know that? Don't panic. I'm not turning psychic. I just heard that name yesterday. Queely mentioned him when he was bawling me out. So who is this Weevil bloke then? Queely chucked him out of the department. Said he was involved in some off-the-wall experiments or something. Sounds like our man. We have to go to the university. If the Joker who tried to kill us is Otto Weevil, we have to find out what exactly he was working on. But... 
Didn't Quilly say that if he found you on the premises, he'd have you thrown in the gutter? Correct. So, we just have to make sure he doesn't catch us. Right? Right. <laughs> Everything in order, everything methodical. Well, Webster, Weevil, bingo. So what's the deal? I hate to say it, but Queelie was right. This character, Weevil, was a madman. Look at this. His research, beyond the threshold of pain. He was doing all this stuff with animals to see how much he could make them suffer before they went crazy and killed themselves. Freak needs locking up. Oh, look. Dear Queelie, Congenital idiots come in all shapes and sizes, but none as monumental as you, Queely. The greatest scientific breakthrough of the age offers itself up and you spit in its face. By cutting my funding, you are cutting my life blood. But beware, Queely. Genius will always triumph over putrid mediocrity. You were born a fool, you shall die one too. So what's all this got to do with that thing in Eddie's mouth? It must mean that Weevil's back in business with a vengeance. He was using Ed to test out some demented new form of torture he's dreamt up. But he could have been killed. Ed wasn't the intended victim, just a guinea pig. We must warn Queely. What better way for Weevil to get even with his rival than to nobble him up with one of those tooth bugs? Problem is, if Queely's not here, he could be anywhere. Think, Munro, think. A Queely's diary. Oh, yeah. Tutorial, seminar, what time is it? Oh, 2.35. Oh boy, are we in trouble, look. 2.30, dental appointment? What happened to Miss Sullivan? I always see Miss Sullivan. A cavity convention in Canton. Oh. Oh, fret not, Professor Creeley. You are in safe hands. <laughs> Relax. Pain is all in the mind, dear Professor. All in the mind. A twinge of discomfort for one man. A terrible torment for another. I really <laughs> think that... Say, ah. Ah. Oh, why so nervous, silly boy? Anybody would think I was going to hurt you. Hmm? Oh, 
nothing like calling up an old friend. Hubert Queeley speaking. Hello, Professor Queeley. You once said I was crazy. You won't be doing that again in a hurry, will you? <laughs> 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 to his weaver little plans. Ain't that the tooth? I won't keep you, it's just, well, I, uh, I believe thanks are in order. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for saving my life. Uh, and, um, all that silly business about turfing you out of the university. Forget it. Water under the old bridge work. <laughs> uh, you are welcome to resume your research immediately. 
Can't say fairer than that, eh? Well, that's very generous of you, Professor Queenie. Jolly good, that's the spirit. So I'll see you tomorrow then, eh? No, I'm afraid not. Well, next week then. No, not next week. What? I tried to tell you, Ed and Julia. They possess a wonderful gift, a psychic energy, a power that we've barely started to understand and develop. I can work with them, help them to focus that energy. We don't need you and your funding and your petty rules and regulations. We can go it alone. We can do it. Oh, right. Fine. Well, I'll just... Uh, fine. Good night, Julia. Night, Munro. Night, Munro. Night, shrimp. Good night, Ed. Good night, Julia. Good night, John boy. Hey. Mm. Ah, so young, so young.